Hello viewers, welcome back to Daily Retro. Today we've got another episode of Retro Gaming News and Additions for you guys. It's been a busy month. Um, I've kind of missed off one item of the previous month, so that's what you're going to see first in the pickup section. But without further ado, we're going to get into the news. Um, it's been not too busy a month, to be honest. There's been a couple of really interesting pieces of news which I'm going to share, um, but there's only two pieces of news that I could actually find that were sort of any of interest to sort of my viewership. Um, so yeah, without further ado, um, so Retro Collective or RMC The Cave in Trollford and Stroud, they also release products occasionally for the F FPGA system, uh, the Mister. Um, so they've released a new um, item, it's called the Control Dock Joystick Adapter, um, and this allows you to put serial style con um, joysticks or controllers into a USB um, input. Um, so this can be used for things like the Raspberry Pi, and the actual Mr. Uh, uh, PCBs themselves as well. And I'm sure there's other applications as well. But anyway, um, it comes with a sort of variation of um, serial ports. I'll, show, I'll flash up an image, obviously. And that allows you to use things like um, Atari controllers, Commodores, Amstrad, anything you can think of from sort of the 8-bit era, um, you can now use on your sort of modern tech um, using hardware FPGA. Um, it's a really nice product. It comes in at £90 including VAT. Um, I believe the pre-orders are up for a order at the moment and link will be down in the description for that. Um, they're always doing really high quality products this company. Um, they also are very popular at doing the um, the sort of multi-system for the FPGA or for the Mister even. Um, so yeah really go and check out that website. I'll leave a link for it in the description. Um, so without further ado, move on to the second piece of news. So the second piece of news is just something that I saw online via, uh, I think it was Macho Nacho Productions, about, it was about a month or so, maybe two ago, but I thought I'd bring it to light just because it ne needs more sort of um, broadcasting. So this is a new version of OpenPS2 Loader, and obviously there's nothing new about OpenPS2 Loader, it's a piece of software that you can run on your PlayStation 2 um, that you can see behind me via USB stick and this allows you to load games from a hard drive but what, what interested me about this piece of news was as a new version of OpenPS2 Loader made by someone called Grim Doomer as sort of an unofficial build and this build has one special feature that means that you're allowed bigger hard drives so previously with OpenPS2 Loader um, it was quite difficult, even for a techie like me, to get a hard drive formatted of more than 500 gig. And PS2 games, if you've got a lot of them, like like myself, then they're going to take up more than that. Um, and yeah, I I was really struggling to to get it to work previously, but I've now downloaded this version and put a two terabyte hard drive in. Um, didn't even have to use any sort of third-party software to put the ISO files on the hard drive. It was actually format of the hard drive as XFAT, um, drag and drop the ISO files onto it, um, open the new version of OpenPS2 Loader, and it just worked. Um, it, sa doesn't, it sounds simple, but honestly, the previous versions of OpenPS2 Loader have been difficult. You've had to use certain bits of software on your computer just to actually put the ISO file on your hard drive. That is no longer longer necessary um, so that's really interesting to see and I can't wait to see more sort of developments on open PS2 loader there's still a few incompatibilities for some games but for the most part now it's really really stable um, I'm really enjoying playing PS2 games off my hard drive so I thought that was definitely worth sharing and I'll leave the link for that software off github in my description so without further ado we'll get into the additions for the past month um, it's definitely a theme, um, it's definitely a controller theme this month, um, so bear that in mind as we're going through. Um, but we'll start off with just um, a pickup that I mentioned earlier, which is just a pickup from Vintage Gamer. Um, so Nick at Vintage Gamer, who owns the shop, if you don't know, um, gave me a very nice deal on an analog stick PS1 controller. And that was £7, and it is honestly in amazing condition. I don't know if you can hear those button presses, but they are really nice, and the analog sticks are still nice and stiff. It feels almost like new, um, so thank you to Nick for giving me such good condition stuff whenever I go in. He just knows I'm 
sort of quite anal about those things. But for seven pounds, you couldn't go wrong. Um, eBay will set you back at least double that, and most retro game shops will charge you at least ten. Um, so that was really nice of Nick. Um, but that was sort of almost two months ago now, so we'll get on to what sort of the newest stuff. So this is stuff that's been picked up from eBay, um, just because it was stuff that I couldn't get in retro game shops wherever I looked. Um, and first off is this, which is a bit of a tangly mess, but just because um, it's got a lot of cables. So that is the official PlayStation 3 AC adapter. Um, I believe this was an American product only. Um, you can see the actual product here. Um, but you sort of connect a SE7 power cable to it, and then it's got two USB ports out. And it doesn't look like much, but the PS3 was one of those consoles where you couldn't charge the controller unless the controller was in the console, um, just because it needed the data channel on the USB cable to be active, which is a bit of a strange decision. Every other console controller I've ever seen does not require that. It just plug it into a power socket and off you go. Um, but with PlayStation 3, that's different. Um, so I believe this also charges the PSP as well. Um, but yeah, I've tried it and it works perfectly, charging two PS official PS3 controllers at the same time. Um, I'm playing a lot of PS3 at the moment. And yeah, it's the first time in absolutely years I've actually had my PlayStation 3 controllers like fully charged. Um, it sounds stupid, but yeah, previously I was having to plug it into the console and the console had to be on for sort of five plus hours. I wouldn't be playing that time and it's still never fully charged. Um, but with this, it was fully charged within sort of two hours for both. Um, and yeah, that was about 12... 13, 14 pounds on eBay. Um, sorry, I can't remember exactly the figure. Um, but yeah, it came all boxed. But obviously, I just I actually wanted the product. I wasn't just going to leave it sealed as such. Um, and then secondly is another eBay pickup. So this is a controller I had my eye on for a while. So it's very similar to another one. Um, so this is the Tribute 64 by Retrobit. Uh, Retrobit made a very nice uh third party controllers for old consoles um, but I obviously wanted the ice colorway to match my N64 um, and got this for 25 on eBay uh, brand new sealed again in the box um, so I was really chuffed with that um, I've been looking for more sort of there's a common theme obviously with the PlayStation 1 controller I'm looking for more wired controllers of late um, wireless controllers are nice but for some games where you don't want the sort of input lag, um, even if it is consistent, um, it's nice to just have a wired controller. And also it means you don't have to worry about charging the batteries on your controllers because if you're like me and you've got a lot of consoles, it's hard to keep every single wireless controller fully charged all the time. So sometimes it's nice to just to whack the cable in and just, just, just get into the game straight away like that. Um, you don't really want to be waiting for a controller to charge before you can get playing. But yeah, I was really impressed with this controller. Really light in your hand, really high quality build. And yeah, I'll be playing a lot of N64 with this controller. I'm actually preferring it to my Retro Fighters wireless controller, so that's how good it is. And then finally, there was a visit by myself and the wife to Retro Games HQ in Swindon of late. Um, we did it on a Tuesday, I think. I just took some annual leave just because we wanted a day together. And the little one was dropped off at nursery that same morning so we sort of drove straight to the shop after um, dropping him at nursery um, so it was nice just to take our time going around that shop for once and not having to sort of um, entertain him as such um, but I picked up a few rally games mostly so not all of them so he'll be pleased to hear um, so we've got a couple of PS2 titles we've got WRC 3 which was on the list haven't got this one um, had good reviews, so I'm looking forward to playing that one. Uh, WRC Rally Evolved. Um, this one's sort of a more arcadey title. I know some of them are more arcadey than others. Um, and this one was a bit of a strange one, but here it is nonetheless. And that is Sebastian Loeb Rally Evo. Um, absolutely love Sebastian Loeb whenever he comes back to the World Rally Championship. Always does really well, despite his age. Um, so yeah, we're really chuffed with those. 
Um, they were pretty cheap, to be honest. I think the Sebastian Loeb game was £8, and WRC games were £2 each. And then finally, just for myself, um, I had a platinum version of this game and wanted to get the non-platinum version, complete and nice condition. So that is GTA San Andreas. Absolutely love this game. I, I do go back to it quite often on PlayStation 2. It's one of those games that just never gets boring. Um, but it's all complete and got the sort of the big map inside and the disc is in amazing condition so I couldn't pass on that um, and that was uh, £6 which I'd, I thought it'd be more than that to be honest in such nice condition and then finally it was just a couple bits that the wife wanted um, so that was Tomb Raider Underworld on the Wii um, she's it's not played this before she's got um, another Tomb Raider game on the Wii, um, but I think there was only two, so this is the, the completion of that sort of little sub collection. Um, and she really loves Tomb Raider, so I think that was only let's have a look um, ten pounds, which does seem like a fair bit for a Tomb Raider game, but I'm sure she'll make good use of it. And then for two pounds, she got this amazing sort of um, addition to that that's related to that even. And that is the official uh, guidebook for Underworld. Uh, again, really, really nice condition. And has a lot of sort of guides and tips, which she really likes doing. She much prefers to read a book uh, similar to me, where you can just read for a guide than actually having to go on your phone and go on websites and deal with ads and stuff just to sort of get tips in, in complicated games like these. Um, so yeah, really tough with that. She got that sort of bundle for twelve pounds as a total. Um, I believe Pete was going to charge like fourteen, fifteen, but she managed to knock it down a bit um, because she likes to haggle. <laughs> um, but that is the pickups for this month. Um, as I say, it's not been too busy a month the past few weeks. Um, been busy with the little one. Is he's just been mental recently, tiring us out like crazy. <laughs> Um, he's just he's just go 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 from the minute he wakes up, but he still sleeps really well at night, so we really can't complain. Um, we still get sort of 7 p.m. onwards to ourselves, um, and it's just a sort of mission to keep myself awake for gaming at night at the moment. Is I'm playing through La Noir on PS3 at the moment. Really really enjoying that game. So fun, um, detective style game from Rockstar, and incredibly cheap on the PlayStation 3. If you've not picked it up. I think it was a pound or two, um, and and yeah, it's got the same sort of mechanics as GTA, but you follow a more set story, um, and you, it's up to you to sort of find clues and make decisions on um, what people are telling you when you're interrogating them and stuff. Um, so really, really enjoying that, um, and the wife is still obviously playing Hogwarts Legacy, um, which I am sort of going back to occasionally, but I am enjoying going back to PlayStation 3, more often than not at the moment. Um, it's just one of those consoles I absolutely love. Um, but yeah, enjoying everything at the moment, so it, I can't complain too much. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this episode, guys. Uh, feel free to leave a comment down below if, you've been, if you see anything you like and want to comment on it. I um, hope to see you very soon. Um, leave a like if you've enjoyed, and don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you very soon. Cheers.